the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the, the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the children's Bible study. Thank you for all the participants. Thank you for Alistair and his family. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling our hearts, for helping us to understand what is going to be taught today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so praise the Lord. So, uh, last um, few classes, we actually were seeing on how we give God praise. We operate in thanksgiving. And uh, I, we, we, we saw about how, uh, how we have to maintain the attitude of praise towards God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, for today's session, I had a different type of Bible study planned for today. Something that we have not seen before. Uh, something that uh, I have studied before. And uh, we, we have many a times, maybe we have covered some of it, but we have not seen in depth of it. So I thought of studying in depth of it. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, before we go, um, uh, does anyone remember what we studied yesterday? No one? What did we study yesterday? Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, yes. Yeah. What did we study yesterday? We have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ and where the word of God becomes our lifestyle. Christ means the anointed one. Okay. And if we are in Christ, we should also be anointed. We are also anointed ones and we are walking in union with him. When we are walking in union and fellowship with him, that means we are living according to what he has promised. Yeah. Yes, yesterday we also had a very short session. Praise God. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Now let me start with a question. Okay. How do we have relationship with others? How do we know others? How do we have relationship with others? Anyone? It's very simple. How do we know others? Regular communication. With? With the other person. With others. So, with communication with others, okay. Is that the only way? Oh, when we live together as a family, we will come to know. How is, the, how is our relationship with... Or when we are friends... When we spend time, when we spend time, actually. When we yeah. spend time, okay. Okay, okay. We know any person, whether it is communication or spending time, we know any person through the physical senses, yeah. through our five senses. Okay. We spend time, we see the person, we hear the person, we... Uh, know what the person likes or the person doesn't like because we know him, we know the person through the physical senses. And this has continued for a long time where we know people's senses. Alistair, we can't hear you. What happened? Is he there or he got disconnected? Uh, he's there, but he's on mute. Alistair, you're on mute. Alistair? I think his connection is gone. Okay, okay. I don't know how he got disconnected suddenly. Huh? Okay, thank you, Jesus. No, for us, you are on mute actually, not got disconnected. You were on yeah, mute. But 
Uh, yeah, because for me, I, it looks like a, I just got thrown out of the meetings. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, okay. Praise God. So if we have to know any person, we know the person through our five senses. We see the person, we hear the person, we spend time with the person. And because we spend time with the person is the reason why we know the person. Because of time spent and we know that person through physical senses. We touch them, we understand them. Okay. Now, many a times because of that, we relate to God and we try understanding God by our senses. We try to feel him. We try to see him. We try to hear him. Okay. And uh, I also thought, I don't know about you, but I also thought this, how good it would be if I was born at the time of Jesus. Has anyone had that question? How good it would be if I was born when Jesus was born, when Jesus was living. Then if I go and ask anything, Jesus will immediately give it to me. Whereas now, not all things happen instantly. And all this happens and all this thinking happens. And all this, uh, we, we, we get into all this thinking where we try to know God through our senses. But God, to know God, it is through the Spirit. And that's why you see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Means God is unseen. He is spiritual. I can't see him. I can't see God. Nor can I see angels. Nor can I see demons. Nor can I see the devil. Because they. it is a spiritual being. For me to know God, because I can't see him, I have to see his reflection. And the reflection of his is Jesus, the word. The word is the evidence of things not seen. The word reflects. The word is the spiritual mirror, as we have studied. The word is the spiritual mirror, which reflects the spiritual things. Praise God. So are you understanding? Hallelujah. So when I say faith, okay, faith. Faith is something that does not have physical evidence. It's something spiritual. And that's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if we are pleasing God, we are pleasing him through faith. And faith is not physical, faith is spiritual. So if I have to please God, I cannot please him through a physical manner or a physical way, but I please him through the spiritual way. And that is through his promise, through faith. Praise God. Now, how do we know God? Through faith, yes. Through, how do we know God? Through his word. Through his word. Does anyone know the scriptures that back up that we know God through his word? In the beginning yes. was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John okay, 1. That's, that's one scripture, okay. Okay, the scripture I like to connect is John chapter 6. Verse number 63. You should worship in word, spirit, we'll... and truth? No. Uh, Is it we should worship him in spirit and truth? No, that's John 4.24. Okay. I said John 6.63. Okay. His word is spirit and life. Uh, okay. John 6.63. Okay, let me put that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, just give me a second. I'll put it. Can you all see? Yeah? Yes. yes. Okay. John chapter 6. Verse number 63.
Okay, see that. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So how do I know God? I know God through his word because his word is spirit and his word is life. The life of God, many times we use that word, the life of God is flowing into us. The life of God is not something that can be perceived physically. It is something that is perceived spiritually. And that's why he's saying his word is spirit and his word is life. Praise God. Are you understanding? Now you see the disciples. How did the disciples know Jesus? By seeing him? Through the flesh, physically. Through the and flesh. After, the, after his death, or maybe spiritually. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, before, before Jesus dies, okay, and before Jesus is uh, ascending into heaven, you see, they knew him only on a physical base, physical senses, physical, uh, based on the physical. That's why you see, uh, when Jesus came and said, come to me, I'll teach you how to catch fish, how to fish spiritually, how to be fishers of men. They knew him through flesh. Okay, this man is saying, let's learn how to catch a fish, okay, I'll go with you. They knew him through flesh. Flesh. But you see, that's why I like to compare. You see the disciples, they knew him through flesh. But you see Paul. Paul may have seen Jesus, but he did not have any relationship with Jesus. He did not have anything, a uh, relationship like physical senses. The question I started with, how do I know others? Through physical senses. But Paul did not know him through physical senses. He did not even have a relationship with him. For Paul, he knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. You know the how? Spirit. He knew Jesus through the spirit. Spiritually. And because he knew him spiritually, that was the reason why he, you, you see uh, Paul... Paul got the maximum amount of revelations. When I am operating in the spirit, the devil is always going to run after you. When any person is walking after the spirit, in the spirit, the devil is running after that person because when he is walking in the spirit is when there is ultimate revelation. And you see, for example, of Paul, the devil was not against Paul, but the devil was against the revelation that Paul received. The devil is not against us, but the devil is against us understanding who we are in Christ. The devil gets extremely panicked when we know our identity and we know how strong we are and we know how, who we are in Christ. They will get frustrated, angry. And that's why now he's saying it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Means the word of God, which quickeneth the spirit, okay, is spirit and life. The word is spirit and life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Verse number 16. Okay, see that. All scripture. Did he say some scripture or all scripture? All scripture. All scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. Now you see the Bible. The Bible was written in different time, different periods, by different people. But you see, 
it was all written under one mighty spirit of god all written by the inspiration of god the holy spirit it was written by the holy spirit it was written by the power of god and it was this power of god it was this glory of god which was displayed on the lives of the people in the bible and it is the same power of god and the glory of god when i start reading the word it is put on display in my life because all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it's not given for others to correct himself for others to change their lives for others to understand the teaching and to believe the word but it is given for us for us to understand the teaching of christ for us to make the corrections for us to operate in righteousness that's why the scripture is given it is an inspiration of god it, it, it the, the the word the scripture is what convicts us of the power of god and the glory of god on display in our lives the scripture the scripture it is the promise of god that motivates us to make decisions according to the word because it's by the inspiration of god it is by the inspiration of god it the whole scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness now this scripture is given to us to understand the gospel of grace and the gospel of truth it is so that i understand the word which is light and which is life to all my flesh and that's what the bible says in romans chapter 1 verse 16 romans chapter 1 verse 16 see that for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god and to salvation the gospel of christ paul is saying i'm not ashamed because this is the gospel of christ for it is the power of god and to salvation to everyone that believes he did not say to some people for everyone who believes this is the inspiration and the power of god all scripture the gospel of christ the gospel of grace the gospel of truth is given to us by the power of god which leads us unto salvation to everyone that believes let me show you another scripture from the book of romans chapter 10 verse number 11 see that for the scripture says whosoever believes in on him shall not be ashamed when we believe in the lord and when we accept him as a lord god and savior we shall not be ashamed why because it is the grace of god on him when i believe in jesus you see the 13th verse of this chapter for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever the bible speaks about whosoever and in the between of that whosoever shall call and whosoever believes he said there is no difference between the jew and the greek means whether the jew and greek believe or the jew and greek shall call the result will be the same hallelujah Okay, two Timothy. Let's go back to two Timothy, chapter three, verse number seventeen, sixteen. Okay, let's read verse number seventeen. That the man of God may be perfect. So this is speaking to all the boys in this class. That the man of God may be perfect. Am I Not right? All of us. All of us. Then why did he say man of God? 
Man means ma man means woman and man. Okay. God okay. man made... means woman, a girl and boy. God created man as male and as female. Okay. Man, he created man with a womb and he created man without the womb. The man with the womb is called woman. Okay, so when God created man, he actually did not create man as superior and woman as inferior. But because of the curse, and because of the curse and because of the disobedience, uh, man became superior and woman became inferior. But when you say the curse was reversed, okay, according to Galatians 3.13, and now this curse has been removed, so there is no difference of that there is no difference anymore and it's so you see in galatians chapter 3 verse number 28 it says there is no difference between male and female no difference no difference see that there is neither jew nor greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Why? Because in the 13th verse of the same chapter, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law because he was made a curse in my place. So it's been done. It's been done. Praise God. Okay, let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 15. Let's see what Peter has to say. See this. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Now, if somebody is saying have these things always in remembrance, then what does that mean? Always remember it. Always remember it, okay? You know what remembrance if he's saying means? Means what he's about to say is extremely important. Somebody will not to say, remember this. It, what he's about to say means it's extremely important. It's extremely important for us. Now he's saying, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my disease, means after my death, to have these things always in remembrance. That means Peter is saying, what I'm going to speak to you, I want you to always have it in remembrance. Praise God. Now let's see what Peter is about to say. Okay, verse number 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. That means what is Peter is saying? Peter is saying we have not followed some devised fables, means we have not followed some stories. Some stories, some made up stories to uh, <clears throat> nothing to take money from you, nothing to deceive you, nothing to cheat you, nothing to become fame, nothing to get a name between people. He's saying we have not come here with cunningly devised fables for our own benefit, but we have made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. One thing I like about whenever Peter speaks, you see, Peter did make mistakes. But most of the time in Peter, you see when Peter speaks, he doesn't speak about his ability, but he speaks about Christ's ability. When he was speaking to the lame man in Acts chapter 3, what did he say? In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. When he was speaking to Cornelius and his family, what did he say? In Acts 10, 43, it is the name of Jesus because you have believed. And now, whenever somebody believes, there is remission of sins. That's what the Bible says. And here he's saying, power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter never preached about himself. Yes, there were 
sometimes when he fell into the law in Galatians chapter 2, you see Paul, Paul fires Peter for saying, why are you speaking about the law? So Peter did get shifted to the law. But Peter was humble enough to say, not me, Lord. Not me, Lord. Without you, I am nothing, Lord. So it's not me, it's everything of you. And that's why he's saying, we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. Praise God. Now, does anyone know what is the meaning of the word eyewitness of his majesty? That means uh, he has seen. Yeah, they were, they saw Jesus in flesh and they witnessed what all that. this eyewitness of the not what a majesty? Majesty. Hmm? What majesty? Majesty is. No, means like I'm saying, what well, eyewitnesses of what majesty? Of Jesus. Of Jesus, the Lord. Okay. The answer is given in the 17 and 18. Okay. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. From God the Father, honor and glory. When they came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So does anyone know what the 17 and 18 is about? Majesty? What majesty is it? When they went to the mount. Pardon? Jesus' baptism and uh, transfiguration. It's only about the transfiguration. The transfiguration of Jesus. Because at baptism, Peter was not there. But at transfiguration, okay. Peter was there. And that's why he's saying, we make known unto you. Now, let's see what Jesus, uh, what Peter witnessed, okay? In Matthew chapter 17, verse number one onwards. See that. And after six days, Jesus take it, Peter, James, and John. See, Peter is there. In baptism, Peter was not there. In transfiguration, Peter is there. Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brings them up into a high mountain of Apart, holy mount, high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. Okay, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. How many of you tried to see a sun directly before? Not try. I've tried, but it hurt my eyes. You can't see. I'm asking, have you tried? I'm not asking whether you can see or not. I'm just asking, have you ever tried? How many of you have tried? Raise your hands to see yes. a sun. Directly. It struggles. Your eyes I just... I tried open. when I saw a small circle. That's it. Okay. What happened to your eyes? I could not see. Looking. It was very bright. It was too bright. Too bright. Now, if they're seeing... Jesus, Jesus' face is like sun. That means the disciples can't see it. It's so bright. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, they appeared unto them, Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, what did he say? Lord, it is good for us to be here. Now, has it ever happened where you are in a prayer meeting and the praise and worship is going on and you just feel so nice? You are just like clean in the spirit and you feel so nice and you feel like goosebumps all over and people around you may be saying, is this person even dead or alive? We don't even know. But you are experiencing some heavenly uh, some heavenly experience and I, I had the question, why does it get over? After the praise and worship finished, did the Holy Spirit went to sleep because he was too tired? Or was it that he went on vacation for some fun? Where did what what happened to those goosebumps? You know what happened to it? No matter what I may feel, see, touch, or smell, that is not bigger than my Lord. That should be the case. You see Thomas, you see Thomas, for example, Thomas said, if I may touch, I, I, if I may 
put my finger in his hand and put my hand in his side. Then I will believe. You know what was that? He did not believe Jesus as his Lord. He wanted to see first. Then he would believe that Jesus is his Lord. But that is not called the life that we are called to live. Yes, there is eyewitness. Now, if for example, if we were sitting around the table and learning the word of God in a in a in a big uh, big room, we were sitting all together in the room, okay, and we were studying the with the Bible in front of us, and we were taking our notes and we were studying, okay, and suddenly in the midst of all us, Jesus Jesus suddenly appears and he comes and he stands on the table and all in front of us, or he stands where the preacher is, and uh, he, you see he's uh, he's um, bright as light and his face is shining as the sun what would be your condition amazed amazed what else happy happy amazed some of you would jump on the chair and shout for joy right yes why because you are experiencing something that is not usual Something that is extraordinary that you were always waiting to experience. And finally, that day came where you experienced it. That's what was happening to Peter. And Peter is saying, it's good for us to be here. How many times when the goosebumps come? How many times when the feelings come? How many times you feel so cold or you feel so hot? How many times you feel, wow, I wish this feeling would be there forever. That's what Peter is saying. It's good for us to be here. If thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Then see what, uh, see what he says then. What's number five? While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Not just any cloud. A bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased, hear you him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be raised again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then? Say the scribe that Elias must come first. Okay, okay, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. Please call. Now, when you see here, uh, you see how they experience the transfiguration first. First, what did they see? First, they saw his face shining. Then he saw his clothes shining. Then they saw Moses and Elias, the prophets. Then they are saying, Peter is saying, it's good for us to be here. Then what is happening? Then Peter is saying, let me make three tabernacles, three tents, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Then what is happening? Then six, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Seventh, a voice comes out of the cloud. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Now all of these incidents that they are experiencing, was less, flesh. To tell you the truth, it is flesh. It was not the spiritual realm that they were experiencing or the power of God that they were experiencing. You know what they were experiencing? Flesh. And the flesh is so deceiving. It deceived Peter saying, it's good for us to be here. Feel so good. Feel so nice. Feel so relaxed. Feel so peaceful. But the flesh is deceived. It's deceitful. It deceives. It's cunning. And that's why we should never, ever, ever allow the flesh to rule our lives or the flesh to dominate us or, the, or for the flesh to be bigger for us than what Jesus has said to us. Never allow. That's flesh. And where flesh is, there is every deceiving work, every work of the devil. When I'm operating in flesh, 
The works of the devil is what is controlling my life. When I'm walking in the spirit, it is the word of God which is working in our lives. And it is the word that transforms our life from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. His word. His word is what sets us free. His word is the truth. His word is the gospel. His word is what sets us free from every word, every lie, every spoken deception of the devil. The word. The word of God. Praise God. So are you understanding? Okay. Now. Did they see something physical? Yes. Did they hear something audible? Yes. Did they experience something tangible? Yes. But did it benefit them in any manner to understand Jesus? No. Was Paul here when the transfiguration? Did Paul see the transfiguration? No. But who got more revelation? The disciples or Paul? Paul. Because Paul had an intimate relationship with God through the Spirit. And, and you can see that in the way Paul speaks and says, Lord, what do you want me to do? That means he's having an intimate relationship. What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do next? Praise God. Has it ever happened? When um, when your mother tells you to do something, okay, and you do it, and when you are doing it, okay, she tells you another job, and when you are doing the second job, she tells you a third job, and when you are doing the third job, she tells you a fourth job, and when you are doing the fourth job, she tells you a fifth job. Has that ever happened? Yes, Thomas is saying yes. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas, can you share about how it works? If I can ask you, me, Thomas? If I yeah. ask me to do something after that, something else, right when I'm doing the half of the other thing, again, not the, another thing, then doing the half of the other thing. And you did it for your mother, what the mother said. And then you little sat down. Then the mother again is telling you to do something else. Has that ever happened? Yeah, I yeah. just sat down after I did something. Yeah. I have experienced that so many times. So many times. I'm doing the first job. I have not even finished it. Can you do this second job? Then second job, I'm doing not the year, finish third job. Then third job, I did not even start this one. Directly another fourth one. And the third one, I'm still starting another sixth one I got. Then. I have experienced it. I experienced it. Okay. Now, in the same way, Paul is asking, what do you want me to do, Lord? He's saying, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to accomplish? What do you want me to do in this life? He's not saying what I want to do, Lord. Help me get a new job. What's up, prayer? Lord, help me get a new job. Lord, help me get into the school. Lord, help me get to pass this exam. Lord, help me to do this. But he's not asking. He's not telling the Lord what he needs to do. But he's asking the Lord to tell, for the Lord to tell him what he needs to do. He's not saying, I need to do this or I need to do that. But he's saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Are we operating in that stage? Where the word starts to become our first priority in our life? Many a times not. To be honest, many a times not. Because for us, what is reality? What is seen? For us, we think reality is what I see. Yes. Maybe. But that's not the whole reality. There is another reality called the spiritual. The unseen world. The spiritual world is the reality. And that's what Peter is speaking about. Are you understanding? Are there any questions on this? Praise God. Any doubts on this? Anyone would like to ask? You can raise your hands if you understood, so I know that you understood. 
Praise God. We are still not finished. There is much more to this. Okay. We have only seen the starting part. There is a lot more. Praise God. Okay. Someone is asking, what is the name of this topic? Um, you can give the name more sure word of prophecy because that's what we're going to see tomorrow. More sure word of prophecy. What Peter is saying. Praise God. So only two people understood today. Was it something too much? Was it too much today? Something very new? I know we have not studied it. Can you, uh, can you repeat the topic once again? You can put a more sure word of prophecy. The name is given itself in the scripture. More sure word of prophecy. What Peter is saying, which we, which we will see tomorrow. More sure word of prophecy. Okay, four. Praise God. Okay, over to you, Sister Asha. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Alistair, for your amazing teaching today. Mm. Uh, I think there are no questions. Can we end with a prayer? Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, Thomas. Is Jesus a, a very bright and how could the disciples see him? It said they were so afraid, no? They were covering. Let me show you the scripture. See, um, see, they fell on their face. They were so afraid, means they could not see, they did not know what is happening, bright, loud, Jesus shining, they were so afraid, so they just fell on their face, means they covered their face. Okay. And then he said, arise, be not afraid. And then they lifted up their eyes, so that means their eyes were closed, they were not seeing Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, yes, Sister Aisha, praise the Lord. Uh, on a lighter side, uh, I think the mother is giving you so many jobs because they are obedient child. Yes, God. <laughs> okay, can you end with a prayer? Yes, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing session, Lord, that we had today. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us this amazing truth, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live in this more sure word of prophecy, O oh Lord, to understand you spiritually. Because, Lord, when we know you spiritually is when we receive more revelation and more understanding, O oh Lord. Lord, we want to grasp you in a deeper understanding, Lord, in a deeper way, O oh Lord. And, Lord, as we are departing from the session, Lord, you continue to speak to us. Because, Lord, you are speaking to us 24 past 7 continuously. Help us, Lord, to hear you, hear your word, and to make our hearts sensitive to what you are speaking to us every day and every moment of our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your mercy that endures forever and ever. And, Lord, as we have heard your word today, it is this word, Lord, that is working in our life and which is changing our lives totally, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Abba Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Alistair. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone.